Hello, Jenny. Hello, teacher. How are you? Hi, thank you. Did you have a good day today? Yes. What did yeah, you do? Only two, <laughs> only two days for finish the course. Yeah, only tomorrow. That's it. Um, tomorrow we finish. Yes. And then what are you going to do for August? I from I I go I am going to visit my parents in Morazan. Ah, that's right. You told me before. That yes, you're going... the the mm -hmm. last the next month that I I will go. <laughs> okay. In Morazan. Yes. Okay. And how long are you going to be in Morazan? One month. One month. I remember that you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And do you like going to Morazan? Yes, I like. <laughs> I like. And what do you do? You only stay with your parents or do you have friends or family in Morazan? No, I I I I have to to rest because I I fell, fell down and I I broke I may well be. I hurt. I, I heard my my uncle. Ah, okay. So one you... month, I, I I need to rest rest for one month. Okay, so Jenny, you you cannot walk in this moment. Mm, no, I am I am in repose. Okay, so for one month, no walking. Mm -hmm. No walking. No no exercise. <laughs> Okay, a lot of only stay home. Yes, only stay home. Okay, that's good though. That way you can you have an excuse to visit your parents. <laughs> yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to to study English. Yeah, the good thing is when you study online, you can study from anywhere, eh, from here, from Morazan, from the yes. beach. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, Sandra? What are you going to do in next week for vacation? Hey, good evening, teacher. How are you today? Good, and you? Well, better than yesterday. Thanks, God. <laughs> well, uh, next uh, vacations, I don't like those vacations, you know? Oh, okay. Why not? <laughs> Because uh, I get older. <laughs> you get older. Is your birthday in the vacation? Yes, of course. Uh, okay. In August six. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, so everybody celebrate my birthday. You know, around El Salvador, because nobody works on that day. <laughs> yeah, that's a. It's going to be Sunday, right? Yes, it will be on Sunday. Okay. But I, on Sunday, I have to go to church and I have to teach my, my children mm -hmm. at Bible Gold School. Okay. Hey, yeah. but that's good. You're going to have a good time to enjoy yourself and, and celebrate. It's nice that your vacation is right in the, uh, sorry, your birthday is right in the vacation. That way, always you, the people celebrate it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyways, yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, yes, teacher, and I want to explain to you what happened yesterday. Um, for a moment, I, I I felt a little bit bad, you know, because I couldn't I couldn't send you uh, my work uh, when you are asking it uh, because yes. uh, I was in in my friend's house and she has had lent me the the her computer. And well, for me, it was very difficult because uh, the internet service there is so weak, you know, so slow. And sometimes I was out and I sometimes I, I was in. Uh, oh my God, it, 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 it seemed to be that I was a little bit, um, uh, how, how can I say, uh, bad educated uh, because it's supposed that, that I was 
like playing, you know, but it wasn't really, uh, I, I, I was uh, very ashamed yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, teacher, please. No, 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 don't worry, don't worry. It, it happens, especially when it's not your computer. When it's not your computer, it's very difficult to uh, sometimes, especially with the internet, if it's not good service and the new computer. So don't mm -hmm. worry, Santa, I understand. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we are almost ready. We have only today and tomorrow for class. The idea is for us to try to finish up today, um, for us yeah. to do the exam today. That way, if we have any mm -hmm. questions, any doubts, anything that's not clear or we don't finish the platform, ah, we have tomorrow. But if we finish today, then tomorrow ah, is relaxing day, review, mm -hmm. the talking, uh, re and just having a normal discussion. Okay? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, well, today I called uh, to the office. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they sent me uh, a notification that I was enrolled in TOEFL number one again, you know. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, um, but I told them that uh, that that it was a confusion because uh, I had already finished the platform uh, and and well, and the paper, the person told me, uh, but there there are some some people that they haven't finished yet. So they have to do it. It, it, it depends that if everybody uh, finished the, the platform, it, you will continue. If not, you will not, it, it, it won't be able, we won't be able to continue with the course. Correct, correct. It has to do with the, the how many people complete or finish the course. Because yes. the idea is if, if how many people start and how many people finish. And we want to make sure that the most of the people finish all of the activities. That's the most important part. But oh, yes. that's why I'm here because sometimes people don't finish because they get confused. They don't understand. It's not clear. And then yeah. they, and sometimes people are scared to ask. And it's, instead of asking, they just say, ah, I just ignore it. And it's not the idea. The idea is to finish the platform. Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. so we're going to take a look at a little bit of today of what we're going to do. Um, fairly easy, as I mentioned right at the beginning, today is our finishing our writing section. We already finished this yesterday. That means that we have the last section, which is the final exam. Yes. Um, today, some of you, I know that some of you have already advanced, which is amazing. That's wonderful. Some partners already completed. That's great. If not, don't worry. The idea is today that we finish it. So today we're going to be looking at the speaking and writing sections, um, and we're going to be answering some questions about them. And then we have some multiple choice. And then, of course, a, a final question that's there. So only 10 questions, not a long time, but it has to be clear, well-written. You have to make sure that sometimes, as you know, with the platform, you have to write it exactly the way that it says in the platform. If not, you'll get it wrong. So we're going to work on that, and then we're going to also have time to check it. Um, for this, we're going to give everybody 20 minutes. I think is enough because some of them are multiple choice. Some of them are writing, but 20 minutes is enough. And then we have the opportunity to check together. Okay, so we're going to make partners. Let's start off. Before we make our partners, are there any questions? No questions, not for me. All right, great. Um, you'll be able to speak with your partner and share or ask or answer your partner anything. So let's work together and try to finish it as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay. Okay, so everybody should be able to answer all of those questions, review of speaking. 
Um, what does fluency refer to? What does fluency refer to? When we talk about fluency, remember, let's read the instructions, make sure it's clear. Um, the final exam reviews the last two sections of the TOEFL course. This review will help you have a clearer idea of all the information needed in order for you to get a good score in your TOEFL test. So this is in regards to speaking and writing. Speaking and writing, what do they refer to? What does the speaking section measure, okay? When we're talking about speaking, what does it actually measure? How long will you have to prepare your response, okay, for the speaking part? In which questions will you be presented with two situations or opinions? Mention the response features with which will help you get a better score. What will you be evaluated on? Mention two tasks which will help you write your essay. Mention two tasks which will help you write your essay. Bear, bear out, verify, vindicate are examples of key phrases to support the reading or challenge the reading. And then protest, query are examples of key phrases to support the reading or challenge the region. reading. Sorry. And the final question, mention the academic subjects the lecture or reading may be about. I'll go back and show you all of the videos to make sure that it's clear for you. Teacher. Yes. Nobody in the in the in the room. Nobody in your room, Jenny. In my, in my room. Let me take a look. We have carving, but he doesn't hear. Jarvin is not speaking. No. No, no speaking, huh? Okay, okay, no problem. I put you with Anna. Okay, video not showing either. Very strange. Let's take a look at this one.
Okay. Video doesn't load either. Negative factual information questions. Factual information questions. There we go. Okay. Welcome to TOEFL Preparation Course 1. In this first course, we will show you two types of reading questions, negative factual information questions and factual information questions. If you think you need to take notes, feel free to do so, or you may play this audio program as needed. First, we will show you negative factual information questions. Negative factual information questions ask you to recognize information that is explicitly stated in the text. This may include facts such as major ideas, supporting details, or definitions, except that instead of only one answer being true, three of the four answers are true, and you have to determine which one is false. For negative factual information questions, look for the words NOT or EXCEPT in capital letters. Keep this tip in mind. For the negative factual information questions, remember that you're looking for the answer that either isn't in the paragraph or directly contradicts information in the paragraph. Now let's try a negative factual question. Here's a paragraph about sports and its risks, and here is the answer. To begin with, you know it's a negative factual information question because of the word except in capital letters. So three of the choices are going to match information in the paragraph, and only one will not. Let's see how many correct choices we can find by scanning for keywords that appear in the answers, like mountaineers fall, risks, avalanches, and so on. We may also need to look for synonyms of these words. So if we scan the paragraph for some text about falls, that corresponds to choice A. We find this, and it's a match. For choice C, we found that information here, where it talks about risks. Choice D is here, where it talks about skiers are swept away by avalanches, but there's nothing in the paragraph that talks about storms. So choice B looks like it might be the answer. Therefore, choice B is our answer. We will now move on talking about factual information questions. They are similar to the previous type because they ask you to recognize information that is explicitly stated in the text. This may include facts such as major ideas, supporting details, or definitions. Factual information questions will have phrases like according to the paragraph or Paragraph X answers which of the following in the question. Here's a tip for answering factual information questions. Don't automatically select an answer just because it contains words or phrases from the paragraph. Make sure you carefully evaluate each option to determine if it is correct. Take a look at sample of factual information questions. Go on reading the passage. Remember, factual information questions look for only one right answer. Be careful when selecting your answer, because three of the four answer choices misstate information from the passage or contradict information from the passage. One answer we can definitely eliminate is A, because there's no mention in the paragraph of his pictures were all negative. Choice B is not mentioned at all in the passage either. Choice C looks like what is said here in this paragraph, that the chemicals continue to react and the pictures went dark, might be the information we need. Choice D is incorrect because it says that he found a way to reverse the black and white parts to make positive prints, so it is contradicting one of the choices. 
That leaves choice C, which is supported by the eighth line from the second paragraph. Therefore, C is the correct answer. Okay, I think it takes a moment for it to load. Okay, it doesn't seem to be loading. All right, so let's take a look at the listening. Um, we already know a little bit about the listening that we have several. We're going to have listening to the gist or purpose. And then we have detailed questions. So let's see if we can get the gist video. There we go, finally loaded. Let's begin with GIST content and GIST purpose questions. Remember that the GIST of something is the main point or key idea. GIST content questions ask you to identify the main topic or idea of the listening conversation or lecture. GIST purpose questions ask you to identify what the main purpose of the conversation or lecture is. You can recognize just content and just purpose questions because they use phrases like mainly about, mainly discussing, why does the student, or what is the main purpose. Here are two things to keep in mind when answering just content and just purpose questions. In the listening section, there will always be either a just content question or a just purpose question, but never both. This question will always be the first question after listening to the passage. Also, sometimes the lectures and the conversations can have two main ideas. In this case, the GIST content or GIST purpose questions may ask you to choose two of the four answer options instead of just one. Let's look at some samples of GIST content and GIST purpose questions. There you go. Now let's take a look at what they mean by detailed questions. So remember, just is just main ideas, main ideas of what's happening, what are you listening to, what are you reading to, that's the same idea for main ideas. Okay, it doesn't seem to be loading, let me try one more time.
All right, it seems to be an issue with the loading. Okay, doesn't seem to be loading. We'll go on to the next. So we understand just the main ideas, details, specific information. That's what it means. We already practiced the listening. Okay, doesn't seem to want to load. I have no idea what's going on today. Okay, let's go to the final part. This might be an issue. Mm -hmm. Daniel, you're very late as usual. Everything okay? Yeah, good evening. Okay, I hope everybody was able to finish or at least verify with their partners. So we're going to go ahead and check um, because I know there's always a few issues that come up when we're doing this. So here, let's take a look. Okay, so what does fluency refer to? When we're talking about fluency, what are we talking about? Go ahead, don't be scared. It's okay. We're gonna check together. Is um, there anybody me... Sorry. So um I don't know. Well, what does you. fluency refer to is 
speaking. Uh -huh. Okay. So, speaking with accuracy, accuracy and natural speed. All right. Very good. So you should have, that's right. It, fluency is referring to speaking, specifically with accuracy and natural speed. Okay. So it refers to speaking with accuracy and natural speed. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about uh, fluency. Good. What about number two? What does the speaking section measure? Ability to convey ideas. Okay, great. That's right. Exactly what it says. The ability to convey ideas. Okay. Or if you write out the complete sentence, it measures the abilities to convey ideas. Those are the two answers that will be accepted into the system. Ability to convey ideas. Great. Number three, how long will you have to prepare your response? How long do we have when we're speaking? We have how many seconds to think about it? Only 15 seconds. Only 15 seconds. And how long do we have to speak? 45. That's Second. right. So we have 15 seconds to prepare, but and only 45 seconds to speak. Good. In which questions will you be presented with two situations or opinions? In questions two. Questions two. Okay, good. In questions two. That's right. That's where we're going to have two situations or two opinions. Okay. What are the response features which will help you get a better score? What are the things that we're going to try to do to make sure that we get a better score or more points? Clear. Fluently. Clear and fluid speech. Preparation. Good pronunciation. Natural space. Natural pace. Good. Very nice. Good. So we want to have, this is the correct answer. We want to have clear and fluid speech, comma, good pronunciation, comma, natural space, comma, and good intonation. No period. Okay. Those are the things that should be included. If you only include one or two, the system is not going to give it to you as correct. It's going to be all of it, clear and fluid speech, mm -hmm. good pronunciation, natural pace, and good intonation. It's all right? Good. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. So then what will we be, what will you be evaluated on? Delivery language. Okay, delivery. Yes. What else? In, uh, language delivery use. Language use. Correct. Topic. Language use and topic, topic development. development. And topic development. Exactly. It's the three of them. So if they ask you about aliens and you start talking about pupusas, mm -mm, no points, right? Topic development is how you're, you're staying on topic and giving more details or information about that. Great. Now mention two tasks which will help you to write your essay. Now we're looking at the essay. What are two things that are going to help us write the essay and get more points in our essay? Write an online outline yeah. right. and choose word. Correct. So we want to write an outline that's going to help us and choose words. Now, which words do you want to choose? Preferably words that you heard already in the lecture or in the reading or words that are part of what the topic is. So if they're asking you about a natural science, try to use vocabulary related. If they're asking you about sociology, try to use those types of words. That's going to help you get better. Having a clear way, remember, introduction, body, conclusion. All right, bear out, verify. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, in number seven, it is the answer, write an outline and choose words carefully. No, carefully, choose words. Oh, okay, for that reason. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, Um. bear, number eight, bear out, verify, 
vindicate are examples of key phrases to support the reading. Support the reading, exactly. Those are some of the vocabularies that we learned about how do we have the information that yes, the reading is supported. You can verify, it vindicates, it agrees with, okay? Good. What about number nine? Protest, query. Challenge the reading. Yeah, those are the opposite, right? They challenge the reading. And what are some academic subjects the lecture or reading may be about? Life science, social science, physical science, and humanities. Exactly. Those are the four that they're going to be about or that they may be about. Life science, social, physical, and humanities. Any questions? Everybody has the correct answer? Well, in my case, in my case, yes, sir. Thank you, Sandra. Yes, very yes. nice. Yes, for me, yes. Yes, also. Very nice, Yancy. Good. Yes. Okay. I uh, think. <laughs> yes, Jenny? Yes, yes. Jenny. But I have a question. Deli delivery, what is that mean? Delivery? Delivery. Delivery uh -huh. is how you give it. The, uh, so where we're looking, where was delivery? In number... In the number five, six. 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 Okay. okay. So when you're talking about delivery is... Okay. So in this case, when you speak your language use, the vocabulary, right? The topic, uh -huh. the idea for whatever it is that you have, how you use it, and the delivery. When you're talking about the delivery is how you convince, how you speak. Like when someone speaks and they're giving a speech, um, like very famous um, narrators, uh, when um, Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King, uh, when they're giving speeches, they give the speech with a good delivery. They give very motivational, very, uh, the idea with high intonation. This is the idea of the delivery. Mm -hmm. If your delivery is, oh, I think El Salvador is an amazing country. Oh. It is wonderful. It is, I love El Salvador. This is a bad delivery. This is horrible. And you lose a lot of points because you're not speaking naturally. You are speaking like a robot. And when you speak like a robot, mm -hmm. there are no points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no it's good it's very good that you ask the question because sometimes this happens especially when people try to memorize the questions or try to get an idea so when like when you go to a job interview and they say oh how are you uh, fine thank you and you but, mm -hmm. but nobody nobody speaks like this but because you memorize it your delivery is in this fashion mm. yes okay Okay, in my case, uh, I don't know if I type wrong. Yes, it might because the answer it said that is wrong in number five. But yes, I have a clear and fluid speech, comma. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Good pronunciation. Yes, comma. Comma. Natural pace. Mm, yes, comma. Comma. Good intonation. Good intonation. Oh, just good, not and good intonation. Let me see. Oh, yes, now, yes. I thank you. You're welcome, Vanessa. Uh, teacher, okay. uh, when we say natural case is like in, in natural rhythm, right? And when we say natural pace, uh, the it's rhythm, universal. correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So the natural, uh, this is the rhythm, how fast you're going, the natural pace. So okay. not too fast and not too slow, because some people, when they, they speak, they have a lot of pauses, right? They begin, oh, tell me about yourself. Oh, and they go very fast and then pause. Yes. And that is not a natural pace. Natural pace is consistent, continue, continue, and continue. Yeah. Consistent. 
that's it. Right. Sometimes uh, for me it's difficult because uh, I want to say something and I forgot in the moment. And that's why I have to, to stop a little bit, you know. Oh my God, that's a problem, really. Because of my age, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the vocabulary, it's not the age. It's because instead of going <laughs> with other vocabulary, you want to use the vocabulary that you that you don't know. And then it becomes a problem because you're trying to think of it. Yeah, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Fatima, did you have a question or comment? Uh, the thing is that in my case, the uh, question number five showed me like a problem, but I don't know if it will be for the space between commas. I don't know. If we have to left some space or there, not? There is one space between each comma, yes. Yes. Okay, but that's the point. I don't know why. So it continues to show me like a wrong answer. Share your screen with us, Patima. We can help you. Okay. Okay, can you see? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, but just, yeah. All right, so number six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So delivery, language use, mm -hmm. uh, development. Okay, so delivery, no capital letter. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Language, oh, yeah. no U, in, uh, yeah. the, the E. Language. No, 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 the opposite. So oh, okay. the U before the A, yeah, no U before the E, okay? Language. Uh -huh. And that's, yeah, okay. Good. And then mm -hmm. topic development. Mm -hmm. Topic development. Yes, check it. It should be correct this time. Oh, okay. It is uh, on. Okay, no capital letter, right? For number five. Yeah. No, no, clear was capital letter, yes. Clear, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, clear and fluid speech, uh -huh. good pronunciation, space, and good intonation, right? Uh huh. Go back, let's take a look. Natural speed. Go back. It's clear and speed. Clear and fluid. No, no, speech. Speed, no. Speech, no. Speech, that's not nice. Speech. Uh -huh. That's the correct form, right? Speech, yes. Okay. Clear and fluid speech. Good pronunciation. Uh -huh. Natural speed. Okay. But you didn't Natural spell speed. pronunciation. You didn't spell pronunciation correctly. It's in red. You didn't spell it correctly. You put pronunciation, and it's pronunci with a c. Pronunciation. Oh, okay. There you go. What else? Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. No problem. It's only a, sometimes it's only one letter, right? It's only the small yeah. letter. No problem. Good. Anybody else? Any questions? No. 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 All right. Perfect. No. Great. So that means we are finally finished. Everybody will have their diploma tomorrow, if not already. It should um it doesn't if today you finish it's not going to give you option today usually it takes a little time for it to give you the option for the diploma so I know because many times the people say hey I have I finished when did you finish today no you have to wait you have to wait and then it gives you the option usually the next day for your diploma but that means that tomorrow everybody is complete and we won't have to worry about it yes yes yeah, sir. Great. All right. So now that we're just about complete, um, we're going to take a moment at the beginning. We're going to have a few minutes left. Um, looking at the course right now in the chat, 
uh, please write down your suggestions to help us always. Uh, Inglés Cooperativo always is looking to improve, uh, to repeat or replicate things. So we're going to have, for example, uh, like the stoplights, we're going to have green, yellow, red. Green, this is to continue doing things that you liked about the course, things that you enjoyed uh, the thing about the course. This is the green. Whatever you like, you're going to write. It's going to be three different things. The first one is what you liked about it, what you want English Cooperativa to continue doing or myself to continue doing. Yellow, things that maybe um, we did, but you uh, or we didn't do that you would like us to start, right? So we didn't do this, but you say, oh, this would be a good idea to do. This would be a good idea to implement. This would be a good idea to include, right? So one, you like, two, we didn't do, but you would like us to do. And number three, something that we did that you didn't like, right? So we have three areas, things you liked, things that you want us to continue doing, things that you want us to start doing, and things that you want us to stop doing. Take a few moments, write it in the chat, let me know. Okay, I'll put it in there to make sure that it's clear for you. Okay. That way it's easy for you to relate to it.
Okay. I see. Go ahead and finish writing. Don't worry. Okay. It's great. Thank you so much. Always is good to hear the comments or the suggestions. That's how we improve. That's how I improve each time. That way we always try to get even better. Okay. Now I'd like you to tell me, and for those that are writing, go ahead and finish writing. For those that finish, it's with you. Um, I'd like you to tell me for you, which part of the course did you find most complicated or most difficult? Go ahead and finish writing. It's not a problem. But if you already finished, tell me one more time. What area was the most difficult for you? Was it reading, listening, speaking, writing? Which area? Reading, speaking. Speaking. Speaking for you, Sandra and Jenny. For me. For me. No, no. Speaking. No. For me, the most Difficult was listening. Okay. Yeah. For me, listening teacher. My problem is I don't have many vocabularies. And I, when I speak, I, how do you say, me quedo, corta. How do you say it? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't have a lot of vocabulary. I come up short. I come up short. I yes. Good. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Fatih, what did you say? Mm, for me, the more, most difficult is listening. Listening as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. The reason I ask is so that we can think about different techniques and tips for tomorrow on how we can develop those areas. Remember, the most important is not to continue uh, practicing the good areas, right? Is to practice more the difficult areas. So, for example, Yancy says for her is difficult the vocabulary. Excellent, Yancy. Great. You identify the problem. What is the solution? More vocabulary. So, what are you going to do? How are you going to get more vocabulary? What have yeah, you read more? Reading more. Checking yeah. the vocabulary. Remember, we had one day. I sent the link in the chat here for the vocabulary for TOEFL vocabulary. Did you study the TOEFL vocabulary? No. No. No, you didn't study. No. Okay. No. No. Uh-huh. Those are okay. No problem. That's the idea. The idea is it's okay to find and to have areas that are difficult, but what are we doing to improve them? If you're going to take the exam, really you need to study and prepare yourself three to six months for the exam. Because for three or six months, you need to expand your vocabulary for that level, academic, no English, but the academic level, listening, speaking, reading, writing. It's not normal to write five paragraphs. I never write to my wife and I put my message in my wife and I put five paragraphs. It's not normal. But if I'm going to prepare for the exam, I have to practice. <laughs> 
putting in the introduction, body, conclusion, all of these different areas, okay? So don't worry, we're going to be focusing on these areas tomorrow. We're going to make sure that we are doing a great job with them and making sure that if you have any mistakes or anything that are uh, incorrect, we're going to practice making sure that, and you know, I give you some tips on what you can do to make it even easier. Okay, sir. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank well, you for all. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Um, yes, definitely, Vanessa. We'll take a look at tomorrow the links and additional information so that everybody has them and then everybody can copy them and paste them. Okay? Thank okay, you. thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. And to remember, tomorrow is our last day. So if you don't connect tomorrow, goodbye. And I see you in August. <laughs> okay. Good night. And the second right. one there. See you tomorrow. Bye. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.